serial killers are not just a Western phenomenon. There are and there have been serial killer all over the globe. However, the story of this is even more disturbing. The reason being that he killed his first victims when he was aged 14. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a Japanese serial killer who became known as Hamamatsu Death Killer and was obsessed with samurai. Most of his crimes were committed between the 30s and 40s, in the middle of the Second World War. Saisaku Nakamura was born in 1924 in Hamamatsu, a city in Japan with an estimated population of 1 million inhabitants. He was born deaf and mute and lived in a middle-class family, but he was always mistreated by his family and by those close to him because of his condition. Because of this he had a very traumatic and troubled childhood, despite that his grades were high and he was considered one of the best students in the class. It is said that he was very polite and organized and put up with his condition without complaint. Nakamura grew up to be a tall, robust young man. Obsessed with samurai, Nakamura owned many books and movies on the subject, which he read and watched over and over again. He called himself a samurai and carried a kitchen knife that he claimed was his sword. According to specialists in the area, Nakamura suffered from a problem called social ostracism, which is a situation of exclusion and loneliness in which the person does not feel that he belongs to any group. In his case, this problem probably started due to his deafness and psychological abuse suffered in childhood. It is common for people in this situation to create an imaginary world or a second life to feel that they belong to something. That's what he did. He projected himself for his samurai movies and books that he liked a lot. In about five years Nakamura killed between 9 to 11 people, all stabbed, making use of his sword, becoming in his head, the samurai that he so craved. According to his confessions, the first murders he committed were in August 1978, when he was just 14. In his first crimes he tried to abuse two women, but when they resisted he got angry and killed them. He didn't stop there, he liked the feeling of having power over someone else and using his sword with a real samurai. Three years later, on August 18, 1941, at the age of 17, he tried again to abuse another woman and again she fought back and he killed her. And on the same day, he seriously injured another person. Two days later, he brutally assaulted three more people. All these crimes were covered up by the authorities in order to avoid panic, as Japan was in the midst of World War II and the government's concerns were different. This attitude of the government allowed Nakamura to remain free and practice his crimes. In the same year, on the 27th of September, he had an argument with his brother at his house. In addition to his brother, his father, mother, sister, his niece and half-sister were also at home during the fight. Out of control, Nakamura hit his brother several times in the stomach, after which he hit everyone in the house. Only his brother did not resist his injuries, the family's rest survived, but they did not want to report him to the authorities for fear of possible revenge. Nakamura went almost a year without committing another crime, but on August 30, 1942 he decided it was time to continue. He saw a woman on the street and started to follow her home. In the woman's house were her husband and their three children. First he attacked the woman and took her life. Her husband tried to help her, but he was stabbed with the knife several times and he didn't resist either. After that he attacked the two younger children, leaving only the oldest girl. He started to attack her, but he stopped midway through the act and fled, leaving his victim alive this time. He was deaf, so he couldn't hear the screams of his victims, but maybe something scared him and that's why he let her live. The girl reported him to the police. Investigators have suspected Nakamura since her brother's death. Through his description and testimony, the police were able to find, capture, and arrest him. In prison, Nakamura confessed to 11 crimes, but he is believed to have committed many more. Even more taking into account that the police covered up the case facilitating Saisaku to remain free and attacking more people. In the same year of his arrest, his father took his own life due to the public embarrassment he and his family were experiencing because of his son's crimes. In Japanese culture family honor is taken very seriously. Although he was still a minor, he was tried as an adult and found guilty. Doctors claimed he could not be blamed because of his insanity. However, the trial progressed quickly and shortly thereafter, he was sentenced to death. In 1943, at age 19, Saisaku Nakamura was hanged. Probably, if Nakamura's family had introduced themselves, 
he could have been captured earlier. Furthermore, if the police hadn't covered up his crimes to prevent panic in the city, more people could have been saved and, of course, if he had had family support and medical support to help him with his disability, things could have been many different. Well folks, that was today's story. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment that helps me a lot. See you the next time.